All right, boat, let's see what we can do about a speed control for you. I've got this nichrome wire, which is supposed to be fairly resistive. Like a uh, copper wire uh, has very low resistance. It'll let the electricity go through very easily. This has significantly more resistance in it than a copper wire. So depending on the length that I put the electricity through, it will, it will change how fast the electricity can get to the motor. So if I put the electricity through a short piece of this, it'll only slow down the electricity a little bit. If I put the electricity through a longer piece, it'll slow down the electricity a, you know, a lot. So I need to figure out what length I need to cut that nichrome wire to get maybe like a third speed, two thirds speed, and then full speed it will bypass the wire. So I need, I need two, two pieces of wire that are going to give me a, a third speed and a two thirds speed, more or less. So I need to know the resistance of 10 gauge nichrome wire per millimeter, per inch, per foot, eh, meter, anything. Uh, let's see if the internet can tell me. Oh, I also need to know the resistance of the motor. And I just went out and looked at it and it's a 0.75 kilowatt motor. So it's a 100, 750 watt motor, which is actually less than I was thinking it was. I thought it was an 1100, but uh, I, I guess I switched it at some point, which is great. It uses less electricity than I was thinking. And it goes, it still goes fast because that's the, the motor I've been using for a while. So, let me look up the specs on the 750 watt Leeson 24 volt motor and the specs on this nichrome, 10 gauge nichrome wire. Okay, motor voltage is 24 volts. The current is 39 amps. And since voltage equals current times resistance, I can take the current and put it under the voltage. Well, let's just do that. There, so voltage divided by current equals resistance. 24 divided by 39 is 0 0.6, I mean 615, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't need that, that exact. So that's my, 0 0.62 is roughly the resistance of the motor, like when it's running. I'm having some difficulty finding any information about nichrome wire resistance. So, and my little resistance meter thing, my multimeter, isn't giving me very good results. I need to get a new one of those. Anyway, I'm just going to do what's going to be more reliable and give me the definite information anyway. I'm just going to take it out to the boat, connect one wire to the motor, and then connect the nichrome wire to the motor, and then touch it to the other wire, and it should turn the motor on. And then I'll try different spots on the nichrome wire and see, you know, see how the speed control works. And hopefully I can figure out what length I should use. All right, I think I just need a knife, some pliers. Yeah. Oh, I just got a message from someone who had the answer. Ah, so 0 0.65 ohms per foot is 10 gauge nichrome wire. That means to equal the uh, resistance of the motor, I have to use the entire 10 feet. I'm pretty sure this is 10 feet which would put it at 0 0.65, which more or less equals that. So that would put me at roughly a quarter speed if I use the entire piece. All right, let's cut through all the crap. What I've got here is it's a 750 watt motor. So if I connect it directly, um, with the wires to the battery, it'll go about 750 watts, right? That uses 39 amps, according to the information on the internet about the motor. If I wanna run it 500 watts, which would be two thirds speed, I need to add in 0 0.2 ohms, which is just over three feet of this here nichrome wire. And if I wanna run 300 watts, which is it's a little over a third. Then I need almost seven feet of the wire. And I did a couple other ones because, you know, if I want to run 600 watts, it's just under three feet of wire. If I want to run 400 watts, just under five feet. So I think, I think I want the low speed somewhere in the three to 400 range. And then the, the second speed in the five to 600 range. So 
and then you know full speed is obviously obviously the 750. So maybe I'll just say five feet of wire going through five feet of wire that's going to be my slow speed and then going through three feet of wire will be the the second speed so five feet three feet great and now i don't need that um so okay i've got my nichrome wire here and let's say i've got the battery here got the plus and the minus and over here i've got the motor um, there we got the terminals here. Now I can just connect one wire directly, right? And now the other wire is going to go through the nichrome. How do I make the nichrome wire? Okay, let me just draw. Um, let's draw the nichrome wire like this. We'll just make it a fat-looking wire, even though it's not a fat-looking wire at all. Now if I if this is five feet long total, um, and I divide it into, what do I want to do? Three feet and five feet? Crap, I can't. I threw away my other paper too quickly. Yeah, I want to do three feet and five feet. So let's divide this into three and two. Now, if the motor is connected to here, then it's gonna go at the low speed because the electricity is gonna be going through five feet of nichrome wire, right? Now if the motor's connected halfway, or not halfway, but, so the, so the electricity is only going through three feet of the stuff, that will be my 500-ish, five or 600 watts. And then to get full speed, I just connect it right, skipping the nichrome wire. So. I just need a, a three-part switch. I could do three separate switches, but I think a three-part switch. I made a three-part switch before that worked pretty well. So a three-part switch would basically be a thing where I, I push it part way, it connects this, I push it a little further, it connects that, I push it all the way, it connects that. Beautiful. Now I need to figure out how to make this be a useful shape. I don't want to just like a five foot long you know, it's like a meter and a half, almost two meters, well, like a meter, yeah, whatever. A little over a meter and a half of wire. So uh, I should probably coil it so I can make this small. So I'll take the wire um, and then have the one connection point there and then and then have the other connection point and the other connection point there. All right, so I need to cut, well, I guess, I'll cut a, a slightly longer piece than five feet because, you know, I got my little connection spots. I mean, if this is all approximate, even if I cut five feet and I lost a little bit of, you know, distance from the connectors, whatever. Um, so I'll cut an approximately five foot piece of this, curl it, and divide it into a three foot section and a five foot section. Okay, before I curl it, I need to draw on it with my little magic marker here the three foot section and then the two foot section. Okay, got it. You know, I should have done this before, but I, I just checked the wattage at full speed, 24 volts times 39 amps. And it's, oh crap, what was it, 936? 936 watts is the actual. And I guess 750 is, you know, the output power, but it's not the amount of electricity that's being used. So I might want to make my things a little bit higher because five or 600 is going to be not two thirds. It's going to be less. So maybe I want to have six or 700. I got to redo this. Gosh. You know, I was wondering why those numbers were coming out kind of funny. Like they didn't seem right in my head. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we're starting with the actual thing. Uh, Second speed, I probably want to be about 700 watts. All right, there's not much change there. 4.7 feet total, 1.9 feet for the, the second chunk. Um, so if I just cut it about five feet to make it a little shorter, I'll lose a little bit and the connectors should come out about right. This is all approximate anyway. Okay, now I want to go test. All right. 
None of these wires need to be on here. I need to get those off anyway. All right, let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's check how our battery's doing. I just connected this yesterday afternoon. Yeah. And today it's the morning. It's about 11. Looks like the battery's gone from 26.3 volts up to 27. So, seems like everything's working. All right, I will do a much better job on this connection for the real thing. Okay, I have the other end of the motor connected to the nichrome wire. Oh yeah, I've got plus positive going into the motor. And here's the negative. And there's the negative for the battery. So, supposedly, if I touch this wire to that wire, the motor should turn on at different rates depending on where I touch it on this wire. <clears throat> All right, come on, come on, come on, work. Right. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just going by the sound, but this one definitely, this should be a higher speed. This should be a lower speed. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Oh, it's like the simplest speed control in the universe. Oh, that's so cool. All right, what was the distance here? I can feel the wire getting hot too. Okay, two feet, that should be my second speed. Not full speed though. And then approximately another three feet on there. That should be my low speed. I don't think I need my low speed that fast. Yeah, you know what? I think I can use the entire wire. Because the low speed, that's... So that's, as, that's the slowest speed I can get out of this piece of wire if I connect it all the way from end to end. And it still seems like it's going pretty good, so I think I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna throw out my entire paper full of calculations, and I'm gonna use the entire wire, and then, let's see, a second speed will be, let's see what halfway on the wire does. Oh, that's pretty good. So that's low speed. And if I go, wait, halfway on the wire is where? All right, wire, stop confusing me. So oh, halfway on the wire would be like right about there. Yeah, that's plenty. Okay, I got it. You know, this is exactly why I, I don't usually calculate things. Like I'll get a rough idea of what I'm going for, but you know, you can do all the calculations in the world and then you go to put the thing into practice and you look at it and listen to it and it's like, well, I, my instincts are telling me it should be like this regardless of what the, the calculations say. So, yeah, let's do it. Maybe I should calculate what the actual, I don't care. I want it the, the full wire and half the wire, whatever that is. All right, uh, I guess I curl this thing up so it's not such a huge mess, but I want to curl it loose so there's lots of air space around it because I don't want it to actually get really hot. I want it to be able to, to cool off. It'll be out in the open and the air will be blown by so to keep it from overheating. Um, oh, right before I start curling it, I need to put a mark at the middle so I know where to put the second connector. Where's my mark? You know, I don't even have to really put a mark here. It's as long as it's approximately right. You know, I could just bend the bend the little loop for the connector at the three points I want, and then yeah, let me do that. You know, I've never actually worked with this wire before. I can bend it without it breaking, right? How much can I bend it? I'm gonna hope that I can bend this in, into one little thing that a, that a screw will fit through. Well, I guess I'll go get the screw and bend it around. And then the coil, I'm not worried about that because it's not gonna bend it tight or anything. All right, you know, I guess I, guess I just do it. All right, let me do one of the end ones first, just in case it breaks or something. I don't want to worry about wasting in half the wire. Ooh, it's kind of hard. Oh, that's 
pretty hard wire. All right, that's good for the one connector. I got a quarter inch bolt here. I'm gonna make it a little bit more snug. Oh no, I made it too snug. Oh no, about oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. I think that's fine. Huh. Well, that looks pretty good. I got my little loop there. One in the middle, and one at the end. So, Jamie, why would you want to build such a primitive caveman speed controller? Well, I'll tell you why. This little coil of wire replaces, like, this entire thing, that thing there, this thing here, a whole bunch of wires, an extra switch that comes. I mean, so much stuff. It replaces so much. That's it. So simple. Oh, my God. I think I need to get more of this wire. I'm going to order another piece. That's beautiful. Well, let me get it on the boat and make sure it's working and everything. But yeah, like what, what can go wrong with this? It's just a piece of wire. Even if something goes wrong and the wire breaks or something, I can see it, twist it back together or whatever. Whew, yeah. I had some fiberglass stuff outside and I cut this chunk off. Painted it blue and put some bolts in it. And that's going to hold my charge controller. that. Alright, that well, looks pretty good. And I can screw my wires onto there. Now I guess I need to make a switch. 